the glorious Fortescue Hall, majestic ancestral seat of the Fortescue Stanleys, nestling peacefully amidst the autumn hues of the Derbyshire peaks. Melfington Fortescue Stanley III, young Duke of Baslio, heir apparent to the estates and titles incumbent therewith, a ponderous young man, Melfington often strolls around the leafy glades of the estate, deep in thought, contemplating his plight as a rogue of the highest order, but a beneficent soul with a heart of gold nonetheless. The Viscountess Fortescue, Melfington's doting mater, worries terribly about her son's demeanour and decides he must face the world alone to prove his worth. The Dowager Duchess enlists the bungling aid of Chumley Stanhope, Melfington's well-meaning but hapless crony who promises to disguise himself as a normal person to keep an eye on the young Duke as he goes forth into the unknown world beyond the estate's walls. Having been tested beyond endurance, the final straw came when Malfington was found to be committing an act of base fornication with Pater's Corgi. As he is brutally ejected from the hall, he calls to his long-suffering and disaffected manservant, Biggles, who reluctantly shoulders the emotional baggage of the mortified rogue nobleman. With a paltry allowance of £20,000 a week, Melfington Fortescue Stanley III sets out to redeem himself. Unbeknown to our eponymous hero, he is closely followed by a heavily disguised Chumley Fingers Stanhope. Melfington soon accepts his ejaculation from favour and determines to prove his mettle and establish himself quickly in the outside world. Alas, poor Biggles. First stop, the local boutique, where Melfington orders a new civilian wardrobe. I say, sitting down again, Biggles. Now look here, that just won't do. Come on. Come on, cries the young aristocrat. Strolling through the car park, Melfington spies an altogether more desirable mode of conveyance. Hmm, I think I'll have one of these little blighters, the rogue nobleman muses, and beckoning to his faithful dog, I, I mean manservant, he sets off for the nearest purveyor of vintage autorama. Meanwhile... Oops! I say, watch out, old chap. Oh, my God! Oh, 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 oh young man! No. Oh, um, oh, my knees! Oh, 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 unhand me! By this point, Biggles is clearly flagging somewhat and spies the perfect spot to rest his aged and careworn frame. Uh, uh. Malfington is nonplussed by his manservant's geriatric mutterings and disregarding him for the time being, undertakes a detailed perusal of the fine array of salubrious vehicular conveyance. Hmm, not too bad. Mm, yeah. Oh, lovely. Mm. Mm. Ah, jubilate! A peasant's car. How utterly top hole, the rogue nobleman rants. I'd be accepted into the ranks of the plebeian hordes. Mm. How gay. Mm. Oh, I say, the keys are in the ignition. I think I'll go for a spin. And who's this lurking around the corner, hmm? Mm. 
No, this handles splendidly. I'm taking the car, Biggles. You bring the bag. Do hurry. There's a good chap. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Biggles mutters. As he leaves, we turn our attention to the ever vigilant Chumley Fingers Stanhope, who is about to be accosted by this wandering vagrant type in his never ending quest for human contact and spiritual comfort. <laughs> Uh, excuse me. Uh, 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 hey, look, get you, off. Uh, uh, I don't want to uh, give me. Uh, look, get off. Oh, you right, fucking oh, potato, you bastard. I ooh, say, oh, Give that's... me your wallet, you tight bastard. Oh, give me a <laughs> uh, Look, that's just not cricket. Oh, what a bounder. Oh, he took my wallet. Oh, now, uh, now, look here. No, he's affronted all my life. I don't know. These peasants. No. Anyway. Uh. Malfington's modest and compact new residence. Ah, here comes the little bugger now. Hello, Malfington. Lovely motor. Hmm. Yes. Oh, well done, old chap. I think I'll bathe and try on my new suit of clothes. Oh, here we go. Into the new place. Hmm. Ah, here comes Biggles with the baggage. What a man. He's so butch. We've had enough of this bloody Ah, and look who's here, keeping his beady little eye on the rogue nobleman. Oh, such stealth. Where is he? Yes, he's hiding somewhere. After bathing his delicate and tender skin, Malfington Fortescue Stanley III emerges triumphantly resplendent with his new civilian clothes and bouffant coiffure and jets off in his fanny magnet for a night on the peasant tiles. His objective to relieve the local virginal talent and his own scrotal equipment of their maidenhood. As always, he is blissfully unaware of the dangers that lie ahead. Steady there, old chap. Mind how you go, Malfington. Oh, I say, where's he gone? Ah. Oh, there he is. And so begins an odyssey of enlightenment and temptation. Never been closer. I tried to... After an exhaustive search, Melfington finally stumbles upon a quaint hostelry renowned for its warm hospitality. Armed only with his aristocratic obliviousness and a Campari soda stirred not shaken. I say, not too bad, not too bad. He manfully maneuvers into the arena and adopts a suitably elegant, though twattish pose to the obvious admiration of the locals. You, uh, cunt. Why, hello! I think that's a female of the species. By genius, she has two breasts. I'll impress her with my discotheque dance sequence. Uh, here we go. <laughs> I'm very good at this. Come on, look at me, look at me. That doesn't seem to be working. Yeah. I think I'll try the old cigarette routine. I'll sit here. Now, what was it Biddles told me? Uh, blow smoke into their faces. They all love it. They're gagging for it. God, I'm good. Okay, here we go. Think of old Blighty, Melvington. <clears throat> excuse me. I say, excuse me, old chap. Would you like to ride the old hobby horse with me? Oh, look at my tongue. God, I'm so fanciable, aren't I? Oh! Oh! Oh, my God! I don't believe it. How brusque. What about the family name? Does she know who I am? I can't believe it. Oh, it's the end of the world. It's the end of the world. Poor old Melfington. But fear not, all is not lost, for just around the corner lurks trusty Chumley Stanhope 
happily quaffing his first pint of real shandy. Having regained his modicum of composure and stiffened his resolve with gratuitous imbibing, Malfington's attentions now turned to this rather peculiar and quaint courtship ritual involving two fillies with rods flaunting themselves shamelessly in front of him. Oh yes, this is clearly for my benefit. Oh, definitely. Oh, look at that, two breasts. Oh no! It's crisis time for Chumley Stanhope. Instead of keeping an eye on his charge, he's been overdoing it with the shandy, hasn't he? Oh, look at that! How common! How utterly vulgar! Whatever would the Viscountess say? Well, that'll teach him not to be so louche. Well, he'll have a sore helmet on the morrow. Poor old Chumley Stanhope. Never mind, eh? Keep your pecker up. Oh, I say. Here comes trouble. Crikey, look at the size of him. What a large chap. Oi, come here. You ponce, get out of here. I'm going to give you a good going over. Okay, here goes. Every man for himself, yeah? There we go. There we go. Oh, lovely. Hey, what? Eh? What? Me? As if. What? Oh, I say. Oh, no. No, please. Don't hurt me. I have a wife. I have a wife and children. I, 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 I have a heart condition. If you hit me, it's... Oh, if you hit me, it's murder. My wife is having a baby. Oh, God, no. No, don't hit me. Oh, no. Oh, how brutal. Oh, God, no. Oh. And so our delicate friend is left to nurse his redundant penis and his bruised ego in the gutter. His world is shattered, and his dream of redemption through the base practice of fornication has, like his vision, become somewhat blurred. However, all is not lost, for lying in the gutter next to him is his old crony, Chumley Fingers Stanhope. Oh, Fingers, oh, Chumley, oh, I say, do be careful there, chap. Oh, it's so nice to see you. I thought, I thought you were gone forever. Oh, oh, no, look, no. I'm oh. definitely not on form today. Oh. Oh. I've been in the wall somewhat, old chap. Malfington Fortescue Stanley III will return.